and namaste everyone today in this video i am going to talk of gemini astrology which is my favorite system of jyotish what i have found that this system works very brilliantly and whereas other systems are suggestive of that some event may or may not happen gemini astrology at the same place according to me is definitive it tells you with authority and surety what will happen but the sad part today is that the system of gemini astrology is wrongly interpreted what sage gemini wanted to say is completely lost for an example you take the calculation of charakaras the shloka clearly tells you atmakarak kaladi birn bhog sapt asht namava इन द श्लोका आत्मकारक कलादि कलादि क्लियरली मींस सिंपली मींस मिनट्स एंड नॉट डिग्रीज बट पीपल हु हैव ट्रांसलेटेड जेमिनी एस्ट्रोलॉजी हैव रिटन पेजेस ऑन पेजेस फाइव सिक्स पेजेस टू एक्सप्लेन व्हाई इट शुड बी डिग्रीज रेदर देन सिंपली कमिटिंग दैट इट इज मिनट्स हाउएवर इन माय प्रैक्टिस ऑफ एस्ट्रोलॉजी फॉर मोर देन 12 इयर्स नाउ आई हैव बीन कैलकुलेटिंग चरकारकास बेस्ड ऑन मिनट्स ओनली and that have been giving me very good results on which i have made multiple videos as well and have taught a course on gemini astrology separately in hindi and in english so first of all you decide about the charakarakas the planet with highest minutes is atmakarak second highest minute is amatkarak third highest minute is bhratrikarak fourth highest minute is matrikarak fifth highest minute is putrakarak sixth highest minute is gyatikarak and seventh highest minute is darakarak so i take seven karakas only distributed between planets from sun to saturn and it is very rare that two planets will have same minutes but if they have then you have to go to the seconds is my particular formula in this video i will be giving you a standard technique of judging about charakarakas through gemini astrology which according to me gives very miraculous and amazing results specifically with respect to darakarak which is supposed to indicate marriage now there is another big problem that we do in gemini astrology you will see there are many people teaching gemini astrology many institutions teaching gemini astrology but when it comes to reading horoscopes they don't use gemini astrology at all this can be because of multiple reasons but i analyze complete horoscope through gemini astrology and it have been my savior and have been giving me very good results so primarily speaking when you take this charakarakas that i have told you you take the karak the planet with least minutes that represents marriage atma karak is the king is what is told by jaimini the karakas which are supported by atma karak the char karakas which are supported by atma karak gives good result and the karakas which are not supported by atma karak gives bad result so you say your atma karak is mercury and your dara karak is jupiter then in this particular scenario you know jupiter and mercury are not friends because the atmakarak mercury is not supporting the darakarak jupiter it indicates a difficult setup in marriage what do i mean by difficult setup here this generally indicates that the spouse is not understanding each other their likes and dislikes are different their preferences way of thinking choices etc are different this is what i basically mean this does not tell you that marriage will be good or not for that there is another technique that i am discussing but the biggest problem that happens in gemini astrology is that when we see horoscope through gemini astrology we see it with respect to ascendant looking at a horoscope with respect to birth ascendant only is a problem in normal traditional jyotish also in parashari jyotish also so i am not talking of divisional charts 
I am talking about different reference points. So you see horoscope from birth ascendant, moon ascendant, sun ascendant, and different lagnas are there. In the same manner, there is something in Germany astrology that is known as Arud lagna, or Pad lagna. You can say that. Now, Arud lagna is to be seen for Raja Yoga, but because this is the lagna that Germany have introduced in the basics, the chapter of basics. Concerning with basic sanyan tattva chapter itself, according to me, this should be used to see the complete horoscope through Gemini astrology. Even when you go to the uses of Arud Lagna, you will see that normally we see income from the eleventh house, but Gemini is very clear that eleventh from Arud Lagna indicates the income, which is suggestive of the fact that Gemini is taking Arud Lagna as the standard Lagna and he is ignoring the birth ascendant. As per a very popular Text on Gemini from South India, Arud Lagna is to be seen for Raja Yoga, right? A text is saying this, and my experience have also confirmed that. But other than this, it is to be used to find the read the horoscope through Gemini perspective. Now there is one more point into this: how to calculate the Arud Lagna? The process is very simple. I am explaining how to calculate the Arud Lagna for the ascendant. This is what we will be dealing with in this video, but the same formula can be used to calculate Arud Lagna for any house. So basically, you have to count from the ascendant how many houses the ascendant lord is away. The distance between ascendant to ascendant lord, distance with respect to houses or rashis, the same number of rashis, whatever is the distance you see, you calculate from ascendant to the position of ascendant lord. Call this x. This x number of houses counted from the lagna lord or counted from the rashi lord in the forward motion, wherever this calculation leads you to, that rashi is arud lagna. There is an exception in this. So basically, lagna lord goes to second house, arud lagna will be in third house. Lagna lord goes to third house, arud lagna will be in fifth house. Lagna lord goes to fifth house. Arud Lagna will be ninth house. Lagna Lord goes to sixth house. Arud Lagna will be in eleventh house. Lagna Lord goes to eighth house. Arud Lagna will be in third house. Lagna Lord goes to ninth house. Arud Lagna will go into the fifth house. Lagna Lord in eleventh house. Arud Lagna in ninth house. Lagna Lord in twelfth house. Arud Lagna in eleventh house. Now, as an exception, there are four principles. When the Lagna Lord is in Lagna itself, Arud remains in Lagna itself. When the lagna lord goes to the fourth house, arud remains in the fourth house. When the lagna lord goes to seventh house, arud jumps to the tenth house, and when the lagna lord goes to the tenth house, arud jumps to the seventh house. This is my research with respect to arud. The Gemini astrology that I teach and that I practice is completely made by me, my own interpretation of Gemini sutra. So when you learn Gemini from me, or when you follow my system of Gemini astrology. Everything, all the calculation of Charakarka, Aruda, and everything, is my own calculation. For this particular reason, it gives me a very brilliant and very beautiful result. Now there is one particular stuff. There is one particular shloka. There is something very particular that Gemini have mentioned in Gemini sutras itself, but the mentioning is incomplete. So I am going to talk about that only. Now, what I have found, like if you want to analyze the marriage, so Dharakara is seen for marriage. Atmakara is the king of horoscope. When king supports someone, they prosper, they flourish. When king stops supporting, they don't prosper, they don't flourish. Same goes with Atmakara Dharakara relationship or the relationship of Atmakara with any planet for that matter. Amatikara. Amatya Karak is like a minister. It is like Koatma Karak, like it is Lagna Lord and Moon Sign Lord. So Amatya Karak works like the Moon Sign Lord, whereas Atma Karak works as the Lagna Lord. So the supporter of Atma Karak. Amatya Karak basically indicates the position, the status that you will have in your life. Then comes Bhratri Karak. Bhratri Karak talks about the deity you should worship, primarily. Then comes Matri Karak. Matri Karak indicates about all the parents. Then comes Putra Karak that indicates about childrens, and then comes Gyanti Karak that talks about the struggles, the troubles, and all these things. 
right but not only this it have multiple other uses also in some other video i will be giving you a profile of of the charaka of all the charakas if you comment that i should continue the series on gemini astrology now talking of the charak which should be indicating marriage <clears throat> the first point that you have understood that if the atma charak and the dar charak if they are not friendly towards each other it will create a bad temperament of the native towards marriage the nature behavior trait character of the native is not very much akin to very much in synchronization with what is needed to enjoy the bliss of metal life for this native but the real predictive principle what i have found is that you should see if the dar karak is a benefic planet or a malefic planet talking of gemini astrology in the first house benefics are good in the second house benefics are good third house malefics are good fourth house benefics are good fifth house malefics are good sixth house benefics are good seventh house malefics are good eighth house benefics are good ninth house malefics are okay tenth house you need benefics 11th house benefic or malefic any of them will work 11th house is all fine but the planet in 11th house should be powerful exalted planet debilitated planet etc and the 11th house is good otherwise not 12th house any planet is bad but if the planet in 12th house is in own rashi exaltation debilitation only these three conditions gemini takes as good then it is good so basically if you want to analyze marriage you see the atma karak is a the dara karak sorry the dara karak is a benefic planet or a malefic planet if the dara karak is a malefic planet it is situated in the third house it is situated in the fifth house it is situated in the seventh house it is situated in the ninth house it is situated in the tenth house it is good in the in the case of sixth house also i will say benefics are good sorry malefics are good right so sixth house though it is told that benefics are good there as per gemini but according to my experience malefics should be taken as good so basically i will conceptualize it once again i will tell it once again third house fifth house sixth house seventh house ninth house tenth house you need malefics other houses you need benefics 11th house 12th house any planet can be good they have to be powerful that's the only point now if your atma karak is a malefic but if your dara karak is a malefic but he is situated in a rashi where malefics are not good it should create bad marriage if your atma karak is a malefic he is situated in a rashi which is not good for malefics the marriage is supposed to be bad so you say if the atma karak is saturn that is situated in 6th to arud lagna this is very good Six thousand malefics are welcome. Darakarak is Saturn. Good. Your Darakarak is Jupiter. That is a very good planet. It is situated in the sixth house here. Benefics are not good. So Darakarak Jupiter just being situated in sixth house from the Arul Lagan will make the marriage bad as per Gemini astrology. Now added to this, there are two things. so i was the first point that i put in front of you is that atma karak is the king planet in kendra to atma karak 14710 to atma karak planet in kona planet in kendra to atma karak 14710 are supported by atma karak 100% support planet in parfar to atma karak second house fifth house eighth house eleventh house are 50 50 supported by atma karak only supported if they are friendly for atma karak not supported if they are enemical for atma karak and planet in third house sixth house ninth house twelfth house in apoklim houses planet are not supported by atma karak so you see if the dar karak is a benefic planet or malefic planet situated in a house which is not supported for him so benefic planet in a house which is good for malefic planet or so malefic planet in a house which is good for benefic planet while being in apoklim Third, sixth, ninth, twelfth from Atma Karak, or situated in second, fifth, eighth, or eleventh house from Atma Karak, while being inimical to Atma Karak, is very bad for marriage. In such cases, fights in marriage, separation, divorce, torture by husband, etc., definitely happens. 
in other cases dharakarak being friendly to atmakarak dharakarak situated in kendras to atmakarak dharakarak being a benefic situated in the house which is good for benefics dharakarak being a malefic situated in a house good for malefics from arud lagan and that displacement good for benefic good for malefic should always be seen from arud lagan it is good for marriage it gives a satisfactory marriage happy marriage the husband and wife lives together peacefully they enjoy each other's company this particular principle as i have told you in the starting gemini astrology is very definitive whatever result is found through gemini astrology that comes to pass that comes to pass without any for but what i have seen if any other system is saying good result but gemini system is saying bad result always remember that gemini system is the most superior system hence the result from gemini system will come to pass this formula is well tested by me over years this is my prime formula for checking a good marriage bad marriage marriage predicting marriage prediction etc in all my consultations which i have shared with you so that your analysis of horoscopes your analysis of marriage becomes better thank you for watching the video